So I wanted to try something a little different today here on Mackie Tech, and I wanted to give a tour of my home lab. So what is a home lab? A home lab is essentially a sandbox or a playground in my case where a lot of tech people, YouTubers, enthusiasts will try out different equipment and different hardware and different software. Uh, in my case, I'm doing one where I am testing a lot of different virtual machines and I have a whole network set up with cameras and this, that, and the other. So just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a tour, a little behind the scenes footage, and uh, we'll see you when we're done. So on the bottom rack, we have our home lab server. It doesn't look like it's very active. It's mostly just in idle mode right now. Not a lot of lights just yet. We're gonna take a peek at that one upstairs in just a jiffy here. Above the server, we have two Unify devices. On the bottom is the UDM Pro. And you can see in the center there, there's a little hard drive that I use for the video cameras. And above that is a 16 port PoE switch. And all of the cables from my camera are going into that. And we go a little bit higher, we have a patch panel. And no, my cable management pretty much sucks. On the top of the rack, we have my two NASs. On the left is the DS920 Plus we talked about in my last video uh, last week. And you can see that I have the four hard drive bays labeled. Um, looks like a two-year-old did it, but it, it works. I use that mostly for media streaming and backups of my virtual machines from my server, uh, music streaming, those types of things. So we'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit more upstairs. And then on the right of that is the DS214 Play that I got in 2014. So that's served me very well for the past 10 years. And I use that to back up my, uh, my 920. That's the main backup for that. On the top there, that's a uh, five terabyte external drive that I use for uh, incidental backups. And you can see on the front of the 920, there's a little plug that's going in and that goes to my UPS. Uh, I have a couple of those in the rack. Uh, they're kind of hidden and they're very difficult to light, but uh, that is designed in case we have a power outage, which isn't typically, uh, very common in uh, Chicago, but it does happen. And it allows me to safely power them down during a power outage. So now let's uh, take a peek at what is on my home lab on the server that's on the, the last rack. See how I have that configured. I'm actually using Proxmox as my hypervisor. So we'll take a look at that. For the motherboard, I decided on a Super Micron M11 SDV-EC LN4F that has a built-in AMD EPIC 3251 8-core 16-thread system on a chip. It has four DIMM slots that can accommodate up to 512 gigabytes of ECC RAM running at 266 megahertz. It has one PCIe 3.0 port at 16 and one M.2 PCIe 3.0, as well as four SATA 3.0 ports. It also has an S-Speed AST2500 BMC graphics chip, which is a sixth generation processor for remote server management. And when we couple that with the IPMI LAN that's built onto the motherboard, it allows an administrator to monitor and control server resources without needing to be physically at the server. Around the back, we have two USB type three ports for one gigabit LANs, and one VGA out if you want to plug a monitor into this. And of course we have the aforementioned dedicated IPMI port for remote access. For the RAM, I installed two crucial 32 gigabyte DDR4 PC 2100 266 megahertz RDIMMs. And I will leave all of this stuff in the video description. For storage, I use Samsung and I installed a one terabyte SSD for the OS and another one terabyte hard disk drive for the ISO storage and VM backups. For the case, I wanted to get something rack mountable. So I went with this Rack Choice 2U that supports micro ATX and ATX mini motherboards. It can house two five and a quarter inch drives, uh, four 3.5 inch drives, and has an ATX PS2 standard power supply. 
On the front of the case, we have an additional two USB 3.0 ports and buttons for power and reset. So to start us off, I wanted to show you how I access the server remotely. And right now we're on the uh, IPMI login page. So we'll go ahead and put in our user credentials. And here we go. This is a dedicated IP address that we used. And from here, we can go ahead and uh, do any type of configuring. We can reboot the server. Uh, we can update the BIOS. Um, I use it mostly to do remote controls. And we go over to our remote control tab here and we go down to the IKV, I, IKVM HTML. And when we launch it, we see we have the Proxmox uh, terminal here, which I won't uh, mess with right now, but that's how we can get into kind of the back end if we want to restart it or if we wanted to join type of commands. Let's take a peek at the web GUI of Proxmox. Currently I'm running 8.2.7 in terms of the version of Proxmox and I recently upgraded this from version seven a couple months ago and it was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. It only took me like five minutes. Uh, anyway, I have uh, one node. I don't have any clusters on here. It's not a really heavy end server. It's just mostly for me for goofing around. I have six virtual machines, five that I keep running most of the time. Uh, below my VMs is my server pools, or rather my storage pools, I should say. Pools that I use for storing my VMs and my ISOs and for taking snapshots. This one, the Proxmox here, this one is actually going to my disk station, my, my NAS. I use that to do all my snapshotting. And if we jump in here, we can have, these are all the different snapshots I've taken. I have to clean this up a little bit because I don't like to keep all of them on here all of the time because I take up a ton of space. So for my first VM, I have Nextcloud that I use for a, for my personal, uh, kind of my personal cloud. And this is the web interface that I use for it. This is on, I think four gigabytes of RAM. I have uh, 500 and something gigabytes of storage that I utilize. And it's just, like I said, for tinkering around. Um, I don't use it for anything, um, uh, any production or anything that's groundbreaking. So it's kind of cool. I like playing around with it. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. There are like word processors for it. You can use it for taking notes, for storing pictures, a lot of collaborative apps, there's games, uh, there's monitoring software, multimedia. So there's all different types of neat little applications you can run on it if you want to. So we're just gonna go ahead and do some updates on this Nextcloud uh, VM that we have here. We'll let that install. It's got a lot of updates. I've been kind of neglecting it. I'm not really using the Nextcloud that much. Uh, as I mentioned, it's kind of for experimentation purposes. Anyway, let's go over back to the Proxmox. And then below my Nextcloud, I have Windows Server 2022. And let's go ahead and jump into that. This one is running on, I want to say, 8 gigabytes of RAM. And we can make this a little bit bigger. And I use this, I put this on here a while back for playing around with domain controllers. I wanted to learn how to manage groups and manage users and manage computers and devices. And it was really fun using it. It's a, I think it's a trial. It's not activated as you can see. So I believe it's in some sort of a trial mode, but anyway. Next on the list, we have a web server here. And this is mostly for running. I have a couple of web pages that I'm in the process of transitioning over to here. So this is one of the servers. Uh, what is the, one of the web pages I have on here? I'm bringing it over from my NAS and I have keeping track of all of services and sales I have from a uh, estate auction that I did for my folks. And I have a movie database also that I want to move over here in the near future. I like it because it allows me to put in descriptions and who I sold the product to and what it sold for and the date and note. I have fixed it up so I can attach images and I can put in new entries in here if I want to. I select my categories from here. If I ever have new sales and I still have a bunch of stuff that I have to sell. And then the next one down is Windows 10. I have a VM of that and we'll take a peek at that real quick. Oh yeah, so this one, this is a Windows 10 VM. 
And I'm using it right now to learn Visual Studio. Specifically, I'm using it to learn Angular and uh, C Sharp that I'm uh, learning on Udemy, which is a pretty cool program or rather learning channel. And it's always nice to have uh, just a dedicated Windows machine that I can log into from anywhere, from my iPad, from my desktop, from my MacBook, from a Linux box without having to have a dedicated machine. And then I have a Zorin virtual machine and I wanted to put uh, Docker containers and just kind of test those out a little bit, which I haven't uh, gotten around to just yet, but it's a, it's a cool little system. And then I have Home Assistant on here and that is also running a version of Linux. And here is the web page. So this is my cameras I have here. I have them also, I have it set up so I can do a couple of um, automations for my studio. And I want to get other automations on here so I can control other parts of the server and, and track things and uh, do other parts of the house at some point in time, but I haven't really delved into it too much. I've been too focused on making YouTube content, but this is a cool way I can set these up. I can turn them off whenever I want. I can do all sorts of things with um, the home assistant here. Okay, so let's take a peek back at our Proxmox dashboard and we'll click on summary. And this gives us a, a very good overview of everything going on with the system. Uh, we have our CPU usage, which is barely above two and a half, two-ish if, if that. And all of the VMs are idle right now, but we're you know barely scratching the surface. Memory, we're a little bit more than half. Server load is minimal. Network traffic is uh, up and down as we use it. And this gives us a good idea to see how much more we can put on here. We can put as many virtual machines on here as our resources will allow. So this is a good you know, way to look at how much money you can save versus going out and buying hardware, independent hardware, bare metal for all of your different server projects. You can put them all on one machine that you make a small investment on, as I did, and you can just test stuff out. You can test out web servers. You can test out versions of Windows, be it server, be it, you know, whatever it is that you're curious about or what you want to learn. And how much money does that save you without having to go out and buy hardware for every single one? So let's take a look at our uh, NAS, our 920, and then we're going to take a look at our Unify network, and then we will go from there. So here we are back at my disk station and I did a, a complete video on this last week about all the different things you could do on your uh, Synology disk station. But I wanted to show you where I stored all of my snapshots for the VMs from my Proxmox. And here we are in the folder for those backups. And I did one, uh, did a couple this morning, actually about three or four this morning. And these are pretty good and Pretty good uh, size, 51 gigabytes, 6, uh, 48, 35, 34. Uh, I do these on a rotation, so it keeps about two or three on hand at a time, and then it deletes them and puts another one on there. I like to keep them that way, just so I always have a couple fresh ones on there. And then I also have my, I mentioned I do a lot of my media streaming, and this is the app I use. It's called MB, which is very, very cool. Uh, I use it to uh, rip, I ripped all my Blu-rays on here, and I have them stored on here and I can stream them whenever I want. And then I also have a lot of my photos backed up on here. I have my music collection that I stream. So the NAS is a, a pretty cool little device you can use to do all sorts of things, but I use it mostly for streaming music and uh, backing stuff up. So let's go ahead and also take a look at my Unify network setup real quick. Okay, so here we are on my Unify. So we have the UDM Pro and then we have a 16 port PoE switch and we have a couple of different access points. I actually just got a new uh, 6 uh, E Wi-Fi 6E that I put on upstairs. And then I have uh, five uh, wireless 5G in the basement. Or excuse me, uh, wireless 5, Wi-Fi 5 <laughs> in the basement. And then I have a couple of other switches throughout the house for other equipment. Here are my cameras that plug into my switch. And this is all in the basement that we looked at earlier. And these are all hooked up uh, through the office upstairs and they go down to the basement. And then I have a four or five different networks that I have set up for my Internet of Things. I have a separate network for my cameras. I have a separate network for my 
coding machine and uh, everything is all separated and everybody stays in their lane. That's the way I like it. This is a, this is kind of just a snapshot of what I wanted to show you so you can see what, uh, what all is going on. So that will conclude our home lab tour for now. Uh, there will be a lot of changes, I'm sure, upgrades in the, in the future that I'll take on to test out more hardware and more software. Uh, if you guys are using any home labs yourself, I would be interested in learning more about them. If you guys are using hypervisors or virtual machines or servers, whatever is in your home lab, let me know in the comments below and give me some details as to what you're doing and why you're using it. Uh, thank you again for watching. If if you found this video useful and you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to Mackie Tech. Give us some comments and we'll hopefully see you again next time. Thanks again for watching.